talk about for a while. All right, we're going to talk about vision boarding. Remember that thing? You know, you remember The Secret, the movie a few years ago? Um, before my kind of other part of my work day came to a close, I wanted to um, just uh, create this conversation about vision boarding for the upcoming year, right? So 2023 is around the corner. Um, and <clears throat> and if you're like me, you know, you went through that phase of feeling is the secret. Remember that? Or I should say the movie, The Secret came out. Um, but for those of you who are familiar with another uh, sort of metaphysics coach um, known as Neville Goddard, you're familiar with feeling is the secret, um, where that's really more of a, a clearer approach to visioning. Now, vision boarding, this has more to do with being able to articulate your, I guess, your desires and putting them in pictorial form and putting them, you know, in a visible location, right, where you can see it and, and identify with it and to some extent feel it at the level of the body and the spirit and the emotional level. And in some mysterious way, right, I mean, let's just call it what it is, right, for, for people who do vision boarding. We don't know how the vision comes to, to life. Let's be honest, right? But we know that somewhere between putting that image up and then um, over time, that something that we saw all, you know, somehow appears, right? Now, the truth is, though, that if you get a little bit behind the science of it, there's um, the brainwave whole, you know, given that we are kind of transmitters of, of, of energy, right? Brainwave wise, we start to attract things, right? And that's the part that nobody ever really breaks down. But there is a science to the whole vision boarding thing. Now, I want to kind of get into the vision boarding versus blueprinting. This, I think, is a conversation that I haven't seen, haven't really heard much about. And I'm going to take the initiative and actually have that conversation and kick it off for any of you who are uh, interested in really understanding how to take your vision board and bring it to life using a blueprinting approach. So now I want to ask you a question, and this always kind of blows my mind. You know, a lot of us on any given day, right, we walk on, we walk or drive on roads. We drive past um, bridges. We take the subway. Um, what else? We flush toilets. We turn on lights. We do all kinds of things in this world that can be attributed to an engineer or an architect. Plain and simple. That bridge that you drove on today, that subway or that train or train track you drove over or rode on, somewhere along the way, <laughs> an engineer, an architect, or a construction worker who used, mm, there's the word, blueprints, put it together. And it just blows my mind how like very few people really are awakened to this. Right, <laughs> the aircraft, the the bridge to the aircraft, right? That um, vehicle or, or uh, equipment that moves you between the terminal to the aircraft, right? All those pieces were assembled, built, put together for you to enjoy, right? Because it was on paper somewhere, and not only was it on paper somewhere. Someone looked at that paper and knew, oh, okay, this is what kind of steel we should use. These are what these connections that connect this bridge uh, elements should use. They knew what grade steel. They knew the, the width and the thickness of each piece, the dimensions, the proportions, right? This is just true. It's just what it is. So... We've got this metaphysical realm of people, oh, oh I got my vision board, <laughs> and who, who really can't put together how it comes together, hoping and sometimes praying that it works, 
And then you got the engineers and you got the architects who are like, what are we building? Where are the drawings? Where are the plans? Where are the specs? This is how stuff gets built. And so what blows me about this whole thing is that you're not going to find a construction worker showing up to the job site going, hey, can you show me your vision board? <laughs> It's not going to happen, <laughs> right? Like, I know we're supposed to be building something, you know, a bridge. We're supposed to put together this roadway. Show me your vision board. <laughs> not going to happen. So that said, this conversation about vision boarding versus blueprinting, I want it to really actually bridge the gap, right? Because you can have your vision board, right? And although I'm kind of like, cracking some jokes, right, on, on the vision board thing. Listen, I got one. I got, like, pictures and stuff on the wall that you can't see here to the right. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm a fan. I'm an appreciator of that process, okay? But also, the engineer in me is very pragmatic, right? I hate being overly starry, starry farry about stuff. Like, when people start talking starry farry with me, I'm like, <laughs> okay. Thanks for sharing, right? And I lose interest. Why? Because I'm like, okay, I get the vision, but how are we going to do this thing? How are we going to pull it off? Where are the drawings? Where are the blueprints? Let's, let's, let's draw it up. Engineers and architects are visual. And I'm just here to tell you, whether you're aware of it, whether you like it or not, you are an engineer. You are an architect. You are an engineer and an architect of your life, your day-to-day -day life right? And there are tools and resources that you use, whether you're aware of it or not, to create your day, right? It starts with the imagination. Then you take what's in your mind and you put it down on paper in, in, in the form of a planner, right? Ideally, hopefully you put it in the form of a planner or maybe you use Google Calendar or iCal, any of those tools, right? To sort of guide you and coordinate your activities over the course of the day. <clears throat> so what's the blueprinting process that I'm talking about, okay? So this blueprinting process inside of what I created called Escaping the Matrix really starts with four steps, right? So first of all, we're all in some kind of daily grind <clears throat> where if we have our vision board somewhere, you have to remember in order part of vision boarding and it coming to life has to do with you really genuinely believing and feeling and identifying with those images in a way, of course, that you know, goes into the subconscious mind and then, you know, brainwave wise, you know, you're kind of generating it and all of a sudden, you know, in its own sort of mysterious way, starts to become attracted to you, right? <clears throat> so there's, there's that level. But I vote on the side of the practical execution where you believe in the thing so much, you see the vision in such a way that you actually have to plan and accommodate for it coming to life. Does that make sense? So what does that look like and what am I what do I mean? <clears throat> so you got the you have the vision board, right? So like for example, I've got vision board, it's got this huge walk-in closet over here. It's got this um dark wood island uh, with a white top granite, it looks like a white granite countertop. Um, island in the in the kitchen area, right? I've got another area that's kind of like a, a little entertainment area part of the house, okay? If I genuinely desire for these things to happen, to manifest, <clears throat> it would make sense for me to say, hmm, let me see if there's a showroom for that particular brand, right? There's a brand on here that's on the actual image, right? Why don't I schedule the time when I'm going to go and I'm going to take a look to see what that looks like in real life? Because I can, right? I'm fortunate enough to be in an environment where there's enough showroom somewhere that I can identify with and say, hey, let me take, take a look at this. So the blueprinting process takes the vision board out of sort of the cloud realm of big picture, big vision. And it brings it all down to earth. Because remember the thing I said, you know, it's the engineers and the architects and the builders 
that actually assemble the home that you're look that you're living in right now. Right? Everything has been accounted for on paper somewhere. And it just, like I said, it just kills me that we don't think through the fact that manifesting does not have to be this woo-woo kind of experience or this, this hoping and praying that it all comes about. Like you can actually wake up in less than 24 hours from now and say, okay, this is the first thing, first step I'm going to take towards realizing this vision, right? Assuming, living in the assumption that this vision is coming to life, well, you know what? I should probably go check out a showroom that features something that looks like that. Or take the image with me and go to a showroom and say, look, I'm looking for I'm looking for a, a closet that's arranged like this. What is it? What does that run? Right? Just engage in the process of knowing that at some point I am going to ask, I am going to get a price for creating a walk-in closet that looks like that one or something similar. So what we're doing when we just, I think, vision boarding, right, depending on how you approach it, uh, we're robbing ourselves of the opportunity to really architect and engineer our lives by putting it down on paper, like ask, actually taking inventory of the actual actions we need to take in order to experience what we have in our vision boards. You have a Bentley on the vision board. Okay, fantastic. When are you going for the test drive? What day? Right? <clears throat> Um, if you, um, uh, have a, a particular home that you have in mind, go, go contact the builder, find out where they've got, you know, a showroom or a, a sample home that you can go and check out. Right. These are things you can literally do. No one's stopping you for doing these things, but what's the significance of the blueprinting process? The significance of the blueprinting process is that you're now in a position of authority and having the experience of influence on the outcome. Nothing assures you more than being able to look at a set of, in the case of builders and architects, look at a set of blueprints and knowing like, okay, oh, this is where the door is gonna go. And then being able to say, all right, you know what? Oh, I realize that if the door is there, it should probably be over here. Now you're actually engaging in the process of your own built reality. Same thing with this whole vision board to blueprinting process, right? In the interest of time, I'll break it down a little bit further. Like, well, what does it look like to actually create this blueprint? As a matter of fact, for those of you who are interested, the Escape the Matrix cheat sheet, right? Which has uh, four steps to it. Four steps are assess, address, access, and accelerate, right? So what you do is essentially you're assessing your life, right? You're assessing the, the kind of uh, experience that you're having with your day to day, right? Because the noise that you tolerate and put up with and all the distractions, like how you're handling those influences, the mental clarity you have to be able to manifest. Remember the thing I said about the brain waves, right? Um, well, you know, imagine you know, all those brain waves, those patterns start to get disrupted if you are overly distracted, right? It happens to all of us. So, one of the best ways to concentrate your mind is actually like have your calendar, have your days set up in a way that keeps you focused on the thing that you said, oh, this is on my vision board that I'm going to actually follow through on, right? So the assessment phase just gives you a chance to just say, hey, look, this is where I'm at and gives you a score. The uh, other phase, which follows the assessment phase, which is addressing, well, you got to figure out like, well, what's the area that's kind of screwing you up the most, keeping your mind in your emotions and your energy clear, right? Which then leads you to the opportunity to access, right? To basically start the design process by actually setting up your calendar to look like the calendar of somebody who's manifesting something big, right? And once you kind of get into the rhythm of that, you can now accelerate, okay? So, <clears throat> so that's kind of the, the gist of this thing. It's not to be taken lightly because when you're focused and you're engaging it, just like, hey, look, if somebody's putting together your dream home, you don't want the architect to be kidding around, being like, oh, I just think I want to put a door over here. <laughs> let's put, you know, ceramic towel over here and let's put the kitchen sink over here. And this, no, you want order, right? 
do you want precision? You want um, specificity. Okay. That's how this works. And you, and, and at the very least, take it from somebody who's been a part of engineering teams that have built things, seen things be put together, seen things be welded, seen things be bolted. Right. And I can't stress it enough. You ain't, you're not going to go into a, on a manufacturing floor or onto the construction site and have someone look at you and look at someone and be like, hey, this is beautiful. Where's the vision board? They're going to laugh you off. They're going to laugh you off the job site. Nobody's working off of vision boards on a construction site, they're working off of blueprints. The physical world is built off of blueprints. I can't stress that enough. And I kind of feel like I've been kind of like soft-toned about it. Like, hey, use a blueprint. No, no, no. no. I'm not going to be soft-toned about it anymore. I can't. I can't. I can't. (laughs) I can't. Did you hear me? I said I can't. Because I'm realizing that, that that dot has not been connected for a lot of people. It just hasn't. And people don't realize, like, stuff that you're using and living in and operating on or with is accounted for on a document somewhere. And that document is referred to as a blueprint or blueprints. So for your day-to-day life, on your way towards manifesting, what's on the vision board, you're going to need those. Okay, let me take a step back. You might not feel like you need them, but I'm here to tell you, if you want to be very, very grounded, rooted, and moving in a direction of seeing that vision come to life, you got to have something to help you with operationalizing your day-to-day so that you are not distracted and focused on the wrong thing. Because when we focus on the wrong thing, then we manifest the wrong thing. Clear? So that's what I wanted to just share real quick. in this you know brief video and conversation because i just think i think you deserve right as this year comes to an end and you go into the you deserve some tools and some resources to help you kind of you know move in the right direction right i i feel if you are like me there's just these phases where you just you're hearing people talk about oh vision boarding and da 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 and it's not quite happening for you and you're like what's really going on why isn't this happening? Right? What's the secret sauce? I'm here to tell you. You don't know, you don't know what the secret, the real secret sauce is? Blueprints. Blueprints. Let me close out with this. I was going to say save this for a different video. <clears throat> but any engineering student? And I hate talking about the engineering stuff because because I, I feel like the minute I, I use the word engineer, people were like, woo. They just check out. They're like, ah, it's too much. It's too much. I can't. It's too nerdy. It's too detailed. I don't have a a TI-85 calculator. (laughs) Ah. So I I, I, got to kind of like chill with the engineering talk. But I'm just here. You want me to lie to you and tell you like, hey, the way that your house was built, it was off of a vision board, man. I, I, I just, I'm not that guy. Go to a different YouTube or IG page. I can't. I just can't do it anymore. I can't do it anymore. Okay. <laughs> so let me give you some secrets. I'm just, hey, I'm, I like to say, I'm giving you some game and, and I'm going to show you how to run the play. Right. See this right here? I forgot where I was. Right. This, this is just a booklet of a particular brand um, that I, I think I found it on Amazon. Right. <clears throat> See this? All right. This is a booklet that has graph paper. I don't know if you can see this. Anyone who's gone to engineering school, just like someone who's gone to art school, you've got those blank books that you're supposed to, you know, scribble and draw in. Engineering students, <clears throat> at least from when I was in engineering school, I don't know what they're doing today. This is life right here. These graph sheets, this is life. These graph sheets are where problems are solved. Statics, 
Dynamics. Uh, what was the other course? Uh, calculus. All right? Sheets like this are what some of us used to solve those problems. See the, see the grid? See the grid? Right? See the grid? This right here. And of course, you know, we can do we can do notes on them, all that. Okay. This this is where problems got solved on paper and then submit it. And in some cases, of course, you solve it here and then you put it into the you know spreadsheet or math cat or whatever it is that, that we used. Okay. But it starts out here. This is where this is kind of our 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 version of vision board. This is where we start drawing out stuff. And then it goes into a CAD drawing. And then that CAD drawing starts to get details, exact details of dimensions, of proportions, of uh, color, call outs of where electricity uh, wiring should go and where doors should be placed and what paint should be on that wall. And then when that's done, it's given to the contractors and the subcontractors here build off of this that's how you get the house that you live in that's how you get the road that you drove on that's how you get the bridge that you drive drive on and and hope doesn't fall in that's how you get the railroad track laid down but what do i know i'm just a random guy on ig and on youtube and on television breaking it down <clears throat> yeah it's just a random guy just talking about how to manifest using blueprints right what do i know and what do you know after all you are living in an environment that was created by blueprints. but maybe they don't work Maybe it doesn't work. Maybe that's not how the world. Maybe the world is just built off of vision boards. <laughs> Listen, man, don't play around with this. If you do not have a way of blueprinting how you are going to live out your future as inspired by your vision board. Listen, here's the deal. Uh, let me close out with this. <clears throat> you can do the vision board thing, right? The thing that's always kind of given me a little bit of sometimes anxiety and worry about vision boarding is the thing that I don't have like a certain relationship to the timeline of realization, right? That's always kind of like bothered me a little bit. I'm I'm better at it now because I'm like, I've, I've learned to surrender and just really trust the universe, right? So with maturity, <clears throat> you can just really trust what's on the vision board and just know that it's going to happen, okay? Um, but like I said, compare that to the real built world, nobody got time for that. You're not going to get to a job site and someone be like, hey, so what are we working on today? You're like, well, you know, I'm just going to let the house manifest. No, nah, no. Nah. The bank that loaned you the money to build that project is not trying to hear that. Do you understand? Right? Because money's at stake. Nobody got time to talk about, oh, well, you know, I just feel like the house is just going to come together because the vision board is here. No. People expect you to have bulldozers, trucks, demolition teams. Carpenters, plumbers, I mean, work's got to get done and it's got to be done using a document. And so I believe that we got to apply that process to how we manifest. That's my stand. I think it accelerates and I think it can help, right? May not be for everybody, may not even be for you, but maybe it's for your neighbor, maybe it's for your friend, maybe it's for your friend's friend, right? <clears throat> But at the very least, if you haven't given it a shot or you haven't had the conversation about how it could work, right, then what do you have to lose but give it a shot? So it's available for those of you who are interested in the process. A couple of things. One, <clears throat> there is a, like I said, an escape the matrix um, cheat sheet that kind of allows you to practice this um, process. Um, and then the other thing is for those who are interested in sort of a real sort of direct line to coaching and really understanding how this works, um, you can apply to have a consult and have a conversation about it, okay? Because it's not for everybody. 
and um, I uh, prefer to not work with <clears throat> people who are kind of like mm, on the fence. I need people who know like, oh yeah, this is what they need. And at the very least wanna have a conversation to confirm whether or not it would make a difference for them, okay? So so that's it. <clears throat> that's my uh, last, last word on this for now. But anyway, um, I wanna thank you guys for joining me. If you are not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do that. Make sure like you are at least in the conversation if you're serious about the subject matter and other related subject matters that I discuss on the YouTube channel. If you, of course, are on IG, thank you for being part of that whole community and whole family. Um, <clears throat> seeing this for the first time, definitely like and share this with somebody because um, people need to know uh, there's, 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 there's life beyond just the vision board, right? Like there's stuff that can be done. And, uh, you know, versus, you know, being stressed, worried, anxious, trying to figure out why it's not happening. Does that make sense? So that's how you can um, begin to um, do this. Start manifesting like an engineer or an architect. Okay. Just some thoughts. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for checking us out. <clears throat> and um, I'll talk to you all soon. All right. Peace.